Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We begin the night with severe storms hitting Metro Detroit. Exact Track 4D radar active all afternoon with severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings popping up in the past few hours and a new warning here in just the last couple of minutes. That's right. Now check out this photo from Mayville in Tuscola County. That's a large wall cloud and that storm marched east into Lapeer County. Back closer to home, live pictures from our Mount Clemens Sky Cam. You see a storm there off into the distance. The warning started popping up around three, and it's been really busy ever since. So let's get right over to Kim Adams and what she's seeing right now on Exact Track 40 radar. Kim. Well, I want to get right to that new warning. It is for Macomb and St. Clair counties. We're watching a cell move through parts of New Baltimore and just about to be into Mount Clemens. The one that was in Ann Arbor is now moving into Wayne County, but it has since weakened, so it is no longer severe. So I'm going to step out and we're going to zoom in a little bit for you on this cell. It is moving to the east at about 45 miles per hour, continuing through parts of Macomb County until uh, six o'clock tonight. So we've got quite a bit of time until this comes through uh, all of Macomb County. So we're going to zoom in a bit for you here and take a look now at Macomb County. Uh, it is a severe thunderstorm warning. It's in the city of Macomb moving off to the east. Chesterfield, Mount Clemens, heads up for you. This severe thunderstorm will be in your backyard within the next two to three minutes. So it's cooking. It's moving to the east very quickly at 45 miles per hour. So it'll be out over the water quickly as well. But it has winds at 60 miles per hour. And also we're getting reports of large hail, about an inch, which is the size of a quarter. That's enough to do damage to cars, certainly putting some dents in your hoods from New New Haven down to Mount Clemens. So this severe thunderstorm extends all the way to St. Clair County as well as this is continuing to move to the east at about 45 miles per hour. Now I want to widen the view back out for you because we've been watching this cell right here uh, that at first looked like it had some signs of rotation, but there was no tornado warning issued, just a severe thunderstorm. And that is now moving through Canton, uh, headed over to I-275. This has been a multi-cell event. It's not a line that we've been tracking. There've just been showers and storms popping up here and there. So it's likely that we could still continue to see a few more of these thunderstorms pop up. So even if it's not raining or storming at your house now, we're not completely out of the woods until about seven or eight o'clock tonight. But again, a severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued for Macomb and St. Clair counties until six o'clock tonight. I'll track more of these cells coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, Kim, we'll talk to you then. Thank you. Our other top story tonight, a terrifying new twist to a story we first brought you last night. The man wanted for an attack in a Target parking lot in Troy is now wanted for a murder overnight in Detroit. 31 year old Andrew Hall was last seen in the parking lot of Target on Coolidge in Troy wearing clothes that matched the description of a man wanted for murder overnight just off Woodward near Palmer Park. Take a close look at the two photos on your left. That's the picture from the attack in Troy on the right. A shot of the suspect in the murder last night in Detroit. Let's get to Pamela Osborne. Uh, tell us more about him, Pamela. Well, Devin, Kimberly, the fact that we are sharing those pictures of him with you, his name as well is an indication of how hard police are working to find him. A warrant has not yet been issued for his arrest, but police, Detroit police in particular, are saying that the community needs to be aware of Hall as he is considered to be armed and dangerous. Take a really good look at your screen. Detroit police say this man is Andrew James Hall. His image first appeared Monday after Troy police identified him as a person of interest in connection to an assault that took place in a Troy Target parking lot last Friday. He's now suspected of murder. If uh, Mr. Hall is watching, I would encourage him to make arrangements to turn himself in. Just after midnight, Detroit police were called to the 300 block of West McNichols. They're releasing few details, but say a woman in her 30s met Hall in the area. There was some kind of altercation and then she was killed. Detectives uh, responded to the scene this morning when she was discovered. Uh, through their investigation, they came upon some video footage uh, that shows the suspect at the scene. DPD got a tip with Hall's name and say other evidence identifying him was found through the course of the investigation. See the picture to the right? Investigators believe that's Hall riding away from this morning's homicide and the same red shorts and white shirt he's seen wearing in the Target surveillance video. 
We did some digging into Hall's past and found out he served time in prison for home invasion and even attempted to escape. DPD working closely with Troy PD, hoping to locate Hall. Uh, there's a $3,500 reward. They're asking anyone who sees him not to approach him and to instead call police. Reporting live outside of DPD headquarters, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local right, 4. What a turn. All right, Pamela. Now, new at 5, a jury in Oakland County has ruled in the case of one of the most high-profile estate cases we've seen in years. They say both of Aretha Franklin's wills are valid, which would normally mean the latest handwritten will is what stands. But as we know with this case, things definitely are not standard. So let's get to Mara McDonald. She's live tonight to help us break down the verdict. Mara. Hi, Kimberly. At issue is a 2014 piece of paper with Aretha Franklin's signature on it found underneath a sofa cushion at her Bloomfield Township home. Is it a will? A jury tonight says yes, it is. And this whole issue has pitted brother against brother. The Queen of Soul died in 2018, and it has been legal wrangling over the division of her estate ever since. That's because two handwritten wills were found in her home. One dates from 2010 and is notarized. The other was found under a sofa. It's from 2014, and it bears her signature. An Oakland County jury late this afternoon determined both wills are wills. Normally, you'd assume the 2014 will would prevail because it's the later copy. We are very happy. Uh, like you said, it's, it's been a long five years. Uh, we don't feel like it should have took that long, but that was the way God had it. Franklin has four sons. Her oldest son, Clarence, lives in assisted living. He has special needs. The remaining three brothers are split into camps. Cal and Edward support the 2014 will. Ted supports the 2010 will. The main difference in the two is the latter gives Franklin's Bloomfield Hills home to her son, Cal, outright, and the remaining royalties are to be split among the three younger sons. A settlement on her eldest, Clarence, is already in place. We're just happy that we got uh, the verdict to go our way and that my mother's uh, wishes, last wishes were adhered to. Back here alive, you know, Aretha Franklin died in 2018, and at that time, her estate was valued around $18 million. It's unclear what it's valued at today. There's a reason that financial planners and lawyers tell you never to put your will through probate the way this has gone, not only because it drains your 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 finances and what you are leaving uh, your survivors, but it also has a high probability of leaving really bad feelings between survivors. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. That is true. Okay, Mara, thank you. A top Ford executive arrested and charged with two felonies for trying to light designer purses on fire. Police say Ford Next CEO Frank Louis Victor was involved in a domestic dispute at his home on Saturday. The purses he tried to burn are worth around $10,000. He's facing arson and assault charges out of Oakland County and being held on a $25,000 cash surety bond. More on the case and the response from Ford coming up tonight on Local 4 News at 6. Stick around for that. A teenager is recovering after an argument on I-696 in Warren, which led to a teen jumping out of a moving car. It all started when the girl jumped out of a Ford Focus. The driver of a semi had to swerve to avoid the girl, but then hit the Ford Focus and the median. The teen who jumped out of the car is in critical condition. The other teen who was still in the car suffered minor injuries. Now to new information in the case against Rashad Trice. He's the man accused of assaulting his ex-girlfriend and killing her two-year-old daughter. Today in federal court in Grand Rapids, prosecutors revealed new text messages Trice sent to his family as police searched for Winter Cole Smith. Victor Williams is following today's hearing, and Victor, the judge, is allowing this case to move forward. Oh yeah, that's right. And this is the absolute beginning of the legal process for Rashad Trice. We know a lot of people are looking very closely at this one. Rashad Trice had his very first appearance in a federal courtroom for his alleged role in the death of his ex-girlfriend's daughter, Winter Cole Smith. The preliminary hearing taking place in Grand Rapids was the backdrop of Judge Ray Kent finding probable cause to proceed with charges. During the hearing, investigators revealed how they used technology to locate Trice with cell phone pinging and license plate readers during a statewide search. Text messages from Trice's phone were also revealed, several of which believed to be addressed to family members 
showing his mindset. One message reads, I love y'all, but I have to end this. Another one simply reads the chilling words, she's gone. We know that Sally Winter's body will be found three days after she went missing in an overgrown alley on Detroit's east side. Trice also waived his right to a detention hearing. If Trice is convicted, death as the result of kidnapping is a charge that faces a mandatory sentence of life in prison. And even though Michigan does not have the death penalty if convicted, Trice could be eligible for this death penalty under federal law. Victor Williams, local. All right, we appreciate that update, Victor. Former President Trump says he has picked up the endorsement from all of the Republican members of the Michigan U.S. House delegation. Trump made the announcement in a release today saying all six will back him in the 2024 election. Of course, the endorsement comes amid the former president's mounting legal struggles on both state and federal charges.